Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha our Mashiach, his voice. Hear, O Yasharol. Yahuwah our mighty one is one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to ask the question that we've already answered. Are there different species of humans on this planet? This is part four, white skin. We've learned where this pigmentation comes from. It's not because Africans went into Europe and evolved white skin over time so that they can relate to the colder climates. It was a lie. Do you know it was a theory? They just made it up. There is no facts and no basis to it whatsoever, but we believed them. Because we wanted to be just like them. We're bleaching our skin to be white. We're straightening, straightening our hair. Our women are spending millions of dollars on creamy crack, my wife calls it, perm. We go to the store and we buy weave, straight hair, so that we can look like them. We just want to be accepted. But now we found out that we wanted to be accepted by the other humans because we are not the same. What a revelation. When I sit down and I talk to my wife about this, and I ask her, you know, because she's pretty much, she's an academic also. And we sit down and we talk. And she's blown away. I ask her over and over again. And she says, honey, you don't have to keep asking me the same thing. Do you believe that this is true? For all of these years? Listen, my whole life, all of my friends were white. All of the people who came to my aid, they were white. When we were small and impoverished, we had I remember her name, Aunt Diane. She was a movie star. She's the one who made sure that we had everything that we needed to survive. Even my neighbors that are surrounding me now. I mean, beautiful people. They're here for me when I got sick. They were cutting my grass, cutting my trees, coming to see about me. My own people didn't even do that. Now to find out that they are a different species of humans is a total mind blower. So what I'm trying to say is that even though they are other humans, if it wasn't for some of them, most of us wouldn't be here today. These people put their life on the line. They were ostracized from their own kind just so they could save us from the others. 
So this is not being created for any hatred towards the white man. That's what I'm telling you now. This is a discovery. We're discovering truth. Should we dismiss with the truth because there's those of the Europeans who help us, love us and take care of us? We cannot do that anymore. You cannot turn a blind eye. Because once you turn a blind eye, the first thing that happens is that you begin to mix with them. And once you do that, your seed is spoiled and your children will become sickly. Less melanin, more sickly. These are facts that we have to deal with. Now we're going to look at the scripture. We're going to see what the scripture, our book, has to say about white skin. Did you know that white skin was in the book? Let's begin. Second Kings, chapter 5, verse 26 to 27. Biblical leprosy. How many of you know the story of Naaman and Gehazi and Elisha? Start from the beginning, from chapter 5. Read the whole story. I'm just going to give you a little overview so that you can see what's happening here at the end. When Gehazi was cursed. Verse 26. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? This is Elijah speaking. When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? What happened was Naaman was stricken with leprosy. Biblical leprosy is a man turning white. This is proof that the children of Israel were black folks. This is without a doubt. Why would turning white be such a horrible thing if you're already white? So Naaman was healed of his leprosy by Elisha. Naaman offered Elisha money and garments and olive yards, vineyards, sheep, oxen, whatever he wanted, because he was healed from this horrible disease. Elisha refused and said, no, go your way. Elisha went home. Naaman went his way. But Elisha's servant Gehazi decided to go after Naaman so that he could receive money and garments and olive yards and vineyard sheep, oxen, men servants and maid servants. And he went to Naaman and says, yes, I came here under the authority of Elisha and I came to collect what you was going to give to him. And Naaman gave all of these things to who? Gehazi. When Gehazi came home, I, I don't understand what Gehazi's thinking was. He didn't realize that Elisha was a real live prophet. And Elisha knew exactly what he had done. And that's when he asked him this question in verse 26. Now in verse 27 is the curse. Listen what he says. The leprosy. Therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. Note. Leprosy is turning white. In the scripture, leprosy is a curse. Gehazi's seed was cursed with leprosy forever. A lot of people, I've heard people say and saw 
videos that the brothers have made and said, this is where white people came from. No, they did not. Now we have DNA evidence where they've come from. So we can put away the speculation that all white people came from Gehazi. But what we're showing you here is that white skin is a curse. Hansen's leprosy. So you see there's two sorts of leprosy. There's biblical leprosy and Hansen's leprosy. Hansen's leprosy is what the Europeans gave us to replace the leprosy that's in the Bible. So when you know of leprosy, you see a person who is disfigured. Well, let me read. Leprosy is an infectious disease that causes severe disfiguring skin sores and nerve damage in the arms, legs, skin areas around the body. Yes, same thing that biblical leprosy does. The disease has been around since ancient times, often surrounded by terrifying negative stigmas and tales of leprosy patients being shunned as outcasts. Outbreaks of leprosy have affected and panicked people on every continent. The oldest civilizations of China, Egypt, and India feared leprosy was an incurable, mutilating, and contagious disease. Incurable, mutilating, and contagious disease. They didn't say anything here about you turning white, did they? It just tells you you get skin sores. If your skin is white and you're exposed to the sun over a long period of time, what happens? You get skin sores and nerve damage. Come on, brothers and sisters. Is white skin a blessing? For all of those who practice and believe in white supremacy, white supremacy is based on the skin. White skin is not supreme. And that's a fact. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 6. Biblical leprosy. I'll show you three witnesses. One, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Moses married a black woman. The Ethiopian woman looked like Moses. Yahuwah said, aren't you as the Ethiopians, O children of Israel unto me? He was speaking of color and the way we looked. Look what happens after he had married this woman. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Verse 2. And they said, Have Yahuwah indeed spoken only by Moses? Have he not spoken also by us? And Yahuwah heard it. Who's they? Miriam and Aaron. Verse 3, now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. He didn't defend himself. Verse 4, and Yahuwah spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. And he said, come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. Verse 5. And Yahuwah came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Moses, and they both came forward. Aaron and Miriam. Verse 6. And he said, Hear, my, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahuwah, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Verse 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. Isn't it wonderful when Yahuwah speaks well of you? Verse 8. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of Yahuwah shall he behold. 
he's going to behold someone similar to Yahuwah. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Isn't it wonderful when you have Yahuwah to fight your battles? Verse 9. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against them, and he departed against two, Aaron and Miriam. Verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Hmm. This is number two. Yahuwah cursed Miriam. What happened? She became leprous, white as snow. Melanin was taken away, extracted. Now, if she became leprous and became white as snow, what color was she before? It wouldn't be a big deal if she was white already, correct? This was a curse. Let's look at another. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. Biblical leprosy again. Verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Verse 2. When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, hold it, a bright spot. Can you notice a bright spot if your skin is already white? But if your skin is dark, it's very evident. All right. And it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy. Leprosy is a plague. Then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest or unto one of his sons the priest. Verse 3. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. Remember, we're looking in the plague. We're looking in skin. We're going for skin color here. And when the hair in the plague is turned white and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy and the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. This is what the priest was looking at. Look at the hair on the top. How it turned white. Look at the bright spots all over his body. We call this today vitilago. In the Bible, Yahuwah calls this a leprous condition. Modern day, term is vitilago. It is a plague. It is a curse to turn white, brothers and sisters. Verse 4, if the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh. You see, it defines it now. White in the skin of his flesh. What color was the skin? And in sight be not deeper than the skin? And the hair thereof be not turned white? Then the priest shall shut him up that hath the plague seven days. So if the hair is not turned white, then you're to be shut up for seven days. Let's shut him up and see what happens next. Verse five. And the priest shall look on him the seventh day. And behold, if the plague in his sight be at stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, deeper in the skin like the 
brother that you saw before? Then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. You know what I forgot to tell you about Miriam? When she had turned white, they put her outside of the camp. The people were in fear. No one wanted to come in contact with her. If it were not for Aaron and Moses praying for this woman, she would have died. But when they prayed for her and Yahuwah hold it, heard it, he healed her and she became whole again. What makes a person whole? Melanin, brothers and sisters. You're covering. To have white skin is like to be uncovered, like going outside with no clothes on. So after 14 days now, because they shut him up another seven days, they said, let's see what's going to happen. Verse six. And the priest shall look on him again the seventh day. And behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, look at that now. Pay close attention to this. If the plague be somewhat dark and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab. And he shall wash his clothes and be clean. Dark, clean, white, unclean. Did you see that? Am I making this up? Am I falsely representing the scripture? I've given you three witnesses that showed you that white skin is not something good. This book was written for black folks. It was warning us about this. But of course, since the church taught us not to go into the Old Testament, only read the New Testament. The Old Testament is for the Jews. You don't need to know any of that stuff. It does not apply to you. That's why we don't know anything. Here are the top five reasons why applying sunscreen should be a daily habit year round. This is one to two. This is EHE Health. Now remember, if white skin is the standard, would you have to put sunscreen on year round? I live in Florida. I watch Channel 13 News. Channel 13 News, every day when they come out, they tell you exactly what the UV rays and how strong it's going to be today. They always warn the people that you have to put on your sunscreen before you come out so that you do not get skin damage. Who are they speaking to? Europeans and Asians or anyone who has white or pale skin. One, it protects your skin from UV rays. We have melanin that does that. Our body turns darker to shade our skin from the sun. The depletion of the ozone layer has increased our risk of sun damage from harmful UV rays. Sunscreen blocks these rays, greatly reducing the likelihood of sunburn. Look for the products like those from Goddess Garden with an SPF sun protection factor of at least 15. 
Some doctors recommend nothing below 30 and use each and every day for full body coverage. You'll want to apply about an ounce of sunscreen every day. Who are they speaking to? I don't know any black folks that apply sunscreen every day. I've seen them do it at the beach. Two, it lowers your skin cancer risk. Skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the United States. Who has that? Europeans in the United States. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, 71,943 people were diagnosed with melanomas of the skin in 2013. You know, melanoma is a little black spot that comes on the skin. Oh, hold it one second. What, what is happening here? In Leviticus, we heard that the priest said, if that spot in your skin has turned black then you are to pronounce the person clean but for the Europeans if they get a black spot it could be fatal total opposite by applying sunscreen each day you cut your risk of contracting skin cancers in half not fully in half only Three, it prevents premature aging of the skin. What prevents premature aging of the skin? Sunscreen. Sun damage from UV rays causes photo aging of the skin, which is characterized by a thick leathery look, discoloration, and a breakdown of collagen, which contributes to lines, saggings, and wrinkles. Studies show that those below age 55 who apply sunscreen regularly have 24% less chance, not a full 100%, of developing these signs of aging than those who don't. Do, do you hear me? Do, do you hear this? So when you look at the Europeans and you see like they're all wrinkled and they got these black blotches all over their skin. This is why. Four. It maintains an even skin tone. Sunscreen helps prevent discoloration in dark spots. Dark spots are good, aren't they? If the spot be turned black or dark on the skin, you are to pronounce the person clean. But for the Europeans, it's the total opposite. They don't want a dark spot on their skin because a dark spot could be fatal. Are you with me? Look at this one. Five. Your chances of skin cancer are higher if your hair is red. That means that you have two mutations, right? We've seen that in the last video. Two mutations. The skin and the red hair. Scientists used to think the reason for this increased risk was due to the fair skin tone of redheads. In 2013, however, here we go. Researchers discovered the MC1R gene mutation, which creates red hair and fair skin. This mutation also creates a cancer causing pathway, which when exposed to UV radiate radiation promotes a genetic propensity towards cancer. In fair skin, Doesn't this put white supremacy? Doesn't this flush it down the toilet bowl? We never created anything called black supremacy. No, they created white supremacy 
and white is right, white is on top, white is the best. That's all we've heard all our life. It's the only thing we know. And we wanted to be just like them because white is right. The Messiah is white. The people who have the money are white. The people who benefit from their skin color are white. So we wanted to be white. But from what we learn so far in this slide alone, White skin is a curse. Yahuwah created melanated people and put them on this planet and they were able to relate to the elements. We know that to be true. The Europeans even say the first people who came, the ones who came out of Africa and came into Europe are the ones who brought the human genome and the Neanderthals mixed with them and gave the ones who brought the human genome white skin so that they can relate to the colder climate. Come on, they're telling you the story. We just don't want to believe it. It just seems like some kind of sci-fi novel. But with all of the witnesses that you have seen so far, with the biblical record, you see that white skin, one, from the scientist's point of view, is a mutation. We see that white skin, from the scientist's point of view, cannot relate to the UV rays. We see that white skin, according to the Bible, is a curse. It's a plague. Be proud of the skin that you're in. So tell me, did the Most High create this skin? Is it a blessing or a curse? You choose. The ball is in your court. Continue to part six. Shalom.